Hello, and welcome to our virtual concert. Every year in March, the United States celebrates Women's History Month, including here at the U.S. Embassy in Vienna. This is an opportunity to honor the incredible legacy of women who have built, shaped, and improved our nations and the world. So we thought, what better time to celebrate some of the remarkable American and Austrian female composers of classical music? Vienna is one of the greatest musical capitals of the world and the perfect place to celebrate the performing arts. Although we cannot yet enjoy concerts together in Vienna's great music halls, we are very happy to bring to you virtually the wonderful music of these Austrian and American women. We hope you enjoy the concert today and invite you to learn more about the composers. Good evening, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here at the Alte Schmiede, a really prestigious concert venue for contemporary music since over 45 years. Many women composers' works were premiered here, and so we are very happy to present this program of women composers, Austrian and American women composers from the 21st and 20th century to you in cooperation with the Exil Arte Center at the University for Music and Performing Arts Vienna, as well as the Alte Schmiede, and of course, hosted by the American Embassy. My two colleagues from IES Abroad Vienna, Miyuki Schüssler and Armin Egger, will present six different compositions in very different styles. And the first piece we have chosen is by Ruth Schönthal. Ruth Schönthal was actually born in Hamburg, but her parents both came from Vienna. Um, Ruth grew up in Berlin and she was a child prodigy. So already at the age of five, she started to compose and also was really the youngest student ever who was admitted at the Sternges Conservatory in Berlin. When the Nazis came to power, the family, of course, was in great danger. Ruth Schoenthal was expelled from school as well as from the conservatory. And finally, in 1938, the family had to immigrate. The route of immigration was very long and complicated. First of all, Stockholm, then Moscow, Japan, and finally, Mexico City. But during all of these difficult years, Ruth Schoenthal would continue her musical training. And luckily, it was Paul Hindemith, the famous composer, who heard Ruth Schoenthal in Mexico City perform her own works and was absolutely thrilled by her performances and offered her a place to study with him at Yale University. So after the war, Ruth Schoenthal went to the United States, studied with Hindemith, and the U.S. became a new home for her. As of the 1970s, she also was a prestigious composition teacher, um, teaching at various colleges and universities in the New York area. And, um, but also, she has about 130 different works, ranging from orchestral works, operas, ballet music, chamber music, and also works for solo instruments. The piece that we will perform for you tonight is called A Bird Song About. And what it is about, it is actually up to you. Um, it is written in a very improvisational style between the two instruments, flute and piano. And also I will stand very close to the open piano lid when I perform this because the composer intended that the sounds of both instruments should really be one unit and meld together.
The composer, Nancy van der Veit, has been living in Vienna since 1985. I had the pleasure of being a colleague of hers at IS Abroad Vienna, where she taught the composition class. Nancy van der Veit is particularly well known for her large-scale orchestral works and also for her operas. Her orchestral piece, Chernobyl, was really performed around the globe, and also her operas were performed in Germany and also in the United States. But looking back on Nancy van der Veit's career, one can really say that one of her big achievements is that she founded the International League of Women Composers in 1975, which was an organization who would support women composers and give them the opportunity to get their works performed. She continued this kind of work when she was in Vienna as she founded an international record label, a non-profit organization called Modern Vienna Masters, where she recorded numerous uh, contemporary music pieces with a particular focus on women composers' works. Tonight, you will hear two different pieces by Nancy van der Veit. One of her earlier pieces, Lento for Piano Solo, composed in 1961, and at the end of the program, two of her fantasy pieces for flute and piano from a later period. And you can really very clearly see how the development of a, co of a composer came about.
the Austrian composer Gabriele Breu studied guitar and composition at the University for Music and Performing Arts in Vienna. Today, she is one of the most reputed composers in Austria. She has received many prizes, amongst them the big award for music from the city of Vienna. Also, she received many commissions for special occasions. So, for example, for the Austrian-Japan year, or also the European capital culture of Marseille-Provence. Um, her pieces are really also performed around the globe by very prestigious orchestras and ensembles, such as Divina Sinfonica, der Orchesterverein, or also the Radio Symphony Orchestra from Vienna. Today, you will hear um, a guitar composition for her called Azurit. This work was composed in 2011, and it is very much inspired by the mineral azurite, and you can just imagine the beautiful deep blue of this color with a lot of mystery. Thank you. 
The Austro-American composer Vali Weigel was born as Valerie Pick into a Jewish Viennese family. She received actually a very profound and good education, something not very usual for a woman of her time. She studied philosophy and musicology at the University of Vienna and also took private composition lessons with Karl Weigel, whom she later married. After the so-called Austrian Anschluss in 1938, life also became extremely difficult and also very dangerous for the family. The sister of Wally Weigel, Käthe Leichter, was an active socialist and was arrested and later on killed at the concentration camp in Ravensbrück. But um, Wally Weigel, her husband, and also the 12-year-old son, they were able to flee to America. Life in the United States at the beginning was extremely difficult, financially as well as artistically. It was actually in the 1950s that Wally Weigel took up a new career and started a new life. She studied music therapy and became one of the pioneer researchers in this field. Also, she continued to compose, and the piece that you will hear um, tonight is a piece for solo flute called Bird of Life. And the composition, for sure, reflects also her difficult life story, but basically takes the listener through all different stages that human beings have to face.
American composer Catherine Huber was born in West Virginia. She received degrees in flute performance and also music theory from Eastman School of Music and then continued her graduate work at Manhattan School of Music, where later on she also became a member of the faculty, teaching there for more than 15 years. Catherine Hoover is particularly well known for her flute works, and she received many, many prizes for them, especially from the American Flute Association. But also her orchestral works um, have been performed by many American orchestras and a lot of prestigious ensembles are playing her chamber music work. The piece that I will perform together with Armin Ecker, so a piece for flute and guitar, is inspired by an artwork. This was commissioned through a project of the Cedar Rabbits Arts Museum and Catherine Hoover herself said about the piece that she was trying to imitate with the musical lines in the flute and also with the musical line from the guitar, the shapes and lines of this piece of art she was inspired by.
Before we play the final piece for flute and piano by Nancy van der Veed, I would like to take the opportunity to thank the American Embassy for their invitation to host this concert. I would also like to thank the Alte Schmiede and Alejandro um, de Valle Latanzio for his support for this project. And also, I would like to thank the Excel Artist Center for Music and Performing Arts um, for supporting this project. But I wanted to really thank you, the audience, for all your support, for listening to us online tonight. And we really hope that concert life, public concert life, will be up and running again soon, and we hope to see you in the concert hall. So thank you very much, have a wonderful evening, and stay healthy. Thank you.